The Kaioken is cool. Kaioken! Like, really cool. Really, really cool. Do you see what I mean? Hi, welcome to the Synth Voice Network. Today, I have a bone to pick with one Akira Toriyama for creating extremely cool things that he totally forgets about and never properly utilizes. Ahem. Ahem. And, well, whatever this is, I want it back. He's really good at seeing the coolest shit imaginable and just throwing it away in favor of constant, constant transformations, each one a little duller than the last. Oh, wow, we're off to a great start today, aren't we? But it's absolutely true that good old Toriyama has left quite a few amazing techniques and abilities just sort of fall to the wayside over the years. And today, I'd like to talk to you about my favorite, the Kaioken, King Kai's signature move that he never uses, not even once. Nor does he teach it to any of the main characters who are with him for the entire Namek saga. For some reason. Can't have these main characters getting to be too useful, can we? Gotta save all the spotlight for the Super Saiyans. But I digress. The Kaioken is a technique invented by our lovely joke master King Kai, a move that amplifies the strength, speed, and cool factor of the user by however many times their body can handle. Now already, we have something cool about this technique that we don't have for Super Saiyan. A drawback. I love when a move in Dragon Ball can't simply be spammed. Back when the Kamehameha was so draining that using it more than once during a fight was a massive gamble that, if it didn't pay off, would be devastating to the person using it. And the Kaioken is quite possibly the biggest drawback out of anything we'd seen yet outside of the Kikoho. Try being here. Kiko, f yourself. Whatever you want to call it. The higher you powered up, the higher the chance was that you wouldn't be able to control the power flowing through you, causing you to damage yourself. I love that. Goku needing to gauge when and where to use the Kaioken during a fight and strategizing outside of just screaming for a bit and making his hair bigger, is so much more interesting to me. Which is actually another big reason why I love the Super Saiyan 3. It had a drawback when it was introduced. Goku needed time to power it up, and it didn't last long. Hence why he couldn't use it against Vegeta. It's a big-ass power boost, with a big-ass chance of it failing on him if he couldn't end the fight quick. But I still believe the Kaioken straight up damaging Goku is a bit more riveting for an audience because Toriyama made sure to lay down the rules and let us know when Goku was overusing it. What? No! I told him not to go over a double! No matter what! This isn't good! I don't know if his body can handle it! I didn't have time to prepare him for that! <laughs> oh, Goku. Please be careful. The second Goku pushed past times two, we knew two things. One, Vegeta was much stronger than Goku, immediately raising the stakes. And two, Goku was not going to be able to keep this up. And I mean, the Saiyan Saga as a whole is, in my opinion, the best arc in Dragon Ball Z. It has everything. The human fighters being relevant, high stakes with multiple characters not having a chance to be wished back if they failed, and a villain who wasn't simply defeated because of a last-minute power-up. And it all culminates in Goku's fight against Vegeta, which hinges on his careful and calculated use of the Kaioken. We see him push it further and further until the Kamehameha and the Gallic Gun clash, where Goku's pure desperation at the thought of losing the Earth in its entirety spurs him to throw caution to the wind, powering up to a times four that blasts Vegeta into the stratosphere and breaks Goku's body. The tension we feel at seeing Goku fall to his knees in pain, while Vegeta is still standing afterwards, hasn't been matched in the series since. 
and the same can be said for the times 20 attack against Frieza. Remember the hype at seeing Goku's aura explode with that classic scarlet fire as he tossed Frieza around like a ragdoll? Just for it still not to be enough? The Kaioken built tension like none other because we knew the rules and we knew the danger and the stakes every time Goku was forced to use it. So seeing it fail is a gut punch to both us and the main characters. It's simply not the same when we see Super Saiyan again and again and again because we know that it's Goku using max power and he can use it and abuse it for as long as he likes in a fight. It's cool that in the Cell Saga, Toriyama sort of realized this and had Goku and Gohan train to master Super Saiyan to get rid of a stamina drawback. But we never saw Super Saiyan be a burden on any character beforehand. And them mastering it to fight Cell didn't actually amount to anything anyway. Because it doesn't help Goku beat Cell, and Gohan just powers up with lightning and slightly spikier hair at the end anyway. It didn't matter. And thanks to Super Saiyan transformations becoming the norm, Kaioken fell to the wayside. It simply wasn't needed. And that saddens me, especially since it was a technique every main character could have learned and mastered to stay relevant. But Tori threw that idea and the very usefulness of every character who wasn't a Saiyan right in the trash. Can you imagine if Yamcha, Tien, and Krillin were still fighting at least mostly on par with everyone else? I know this scene would have gone differently if Tien had a times 20 power up in his back pocket. Take this, you! Uh, Try beam! <laughs> but Z never utilized it again outside of one filler arc and a couple of movies. And GT never even mentioned it. In fact, GT weirdly also forgot about Super Saiyan 2 as well. I don't know. GT was weird as a whole. Super, though. Super came through for me. Now I'll show you the Kaioken! I pulled it off. All the power of Super Saiyan Blue intensified with the Kaioken technique. It wasn't much, and it did get tied to yet another Super Saiyan transformation, but at least it was some acknowledgement of this old technique. For the first time since Super Saiyan 3, we had Goku fighting on a time limit, needing to pop in and out of a dangerous, powerful form like the Kaioken to gain an upper hand against opponents like Hit and Zamazu. It was, dare I say, rad as hell. I don't know about any of you lovely listeners, but I was pumped to see the Kaioken return in some form to the series. I do kind of wish we'd seen it in the Broly movie, and it would have been great if the manga hadn't totally ignored it and threw its canonicity into question. But like, I don't really care about the manga since it's, uh, not very good. So, these canon, not canon arguments don't matter to me. We saw it in the anime, long before the manga adapted the arc. And it's Goku's coolest form in Xenoverse 2, so I don't care about the manga. And actually, let me talk about the video games for a second here since I've mentioned Xenoverse. Now, we all know that the games have transformations down pat, and they are cool as fuck. But to me, they're kinda eh in their application with versus fights. Now, hear me out. I think a power-up should have some kind of trade-off in these kinds of games, since a lot of the time you'll be going up against opponents who don't get transformations at all. Although Xenoverse 1 did give some of the Z Fighters Kaioken, which I'm very grateful for. That is so fucking cool. Do that more, please. Now, a lot of games get what I said, and have a trade-off for the boost, usually draining your key for the time you use them. And my favorite application of this is in Xenoverse where the further you go with Super Saiyan, the less key you get back from dealing and being dealt damage. But the Kaioken, by and large, has always had one of the two catches to its boost, either a health drain or a stamina drain. Now, I don't really like the stamina drain, since I like to keep up transformations for the full fight, just for the cool factor of it, you know? But I still get that it's a viable way to adapt the story's rules and the technique. But for Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, it's a massive health drain. It doesn't stop until you have a single point of health left. It's a gamble, but one that gives you the biggest boost in power and speed in the game, at the risk of being taken down if even a single good attack lands on you. It offers strategy, the question of do I have the health to use this right now? Should I take the risk that in some small way puts you in the same headspace as Goku? 
But you don't get that with Super Saiyan, because you can just charge up your ki if you run low, which in some small way puts you in the headspace of Goku and the rest of Z, where there's really no point to him not going all out with Super Saiyan, right off the bat. I know I'm ranting and raving and probably pissing people off with these opinions, but I'm just tired of transformations, and I want to get back to techniques. Techniques that can't simply be spammed, and the Kaioken is a perfect example of that. Getting to see our main characters struggle and strategize and sometimes fail to utilize moves that have stakes and drawbacks and payoffs is simply amazing and so much more interesting to me than Goku simply powering up and winning. And not only that, but being able to see multiple fighters using something like the Kaioken with varying degrees of success would pump a little more excitement into the series and give some of our forgotten heroes a little more time to shine with the Saiyans. I don't believe that it's ever going to become a mainstream move in the series again, unfortunately. Especially with Goku ditching it once again for the all-powerful Ultra Instinct. But it would be nice to see Toriyama or Toei remember it and let other characters use it for a change. Every single Z fighter, aside from Krillin and Roshi, were with King Kai for like a month at least. The least he could do is teach them the basics. They were far more powerful when they arrived than Goku was when he was learning with King Kai. I think they could have handled it. It's a small hope to see it fully return to the series, but I'm just not holding my breath for it. I really do miss the Kaioken, and if you do too, tell me why in the comments. I'm hoping to engage with my subscribers a little more now that I've hit 4,000. Actually, since making this, 5,000 now, and possibly 6,000 before I finish editing it which is super cool. Oh, and if you're new, this page has mostly been for Marvel content, but I'm branching out and testing the waters a little with anime, starting off pretty strong with my thoughts on Dragon Ball here and there. So, if you'd like, stay tuned. There's a lot more where this came from, and most of it not so negative, trust me. Now with that being said, this is the Synth Voice Network, signing off, and Toei needs to give Tien more love. Thanks for stopping by.